Hey guys, today I got with me my Sten submachine gun again. I did make a video of this gun, I guess a couple months ago or so, back when it was cold. I didn't really like the way that video turned out. It's a good video, I mean, I guess, if I can pat myself on the back. Um, now I think it's an alright video, but I did want to make another one where I actually kind of break down the gun for you guys. It's so simple, just like the Uzi, that it's just kind of interesting to see what the bolt looks like and how everything works and breaks down. So I wanted to take the time in this video to do that real quick for you, and then we can do a little bit of shooting also at the end. All right, so here's the stand a little bit closer. When I have key parts that I want to show you the parts of, I'll zoom in close so that you can see them. So here's the Sten gun with the magazine well pointed down. This is just for storage. It makes it look kind of more like a normal gun, but you can't actually fire it from this. The magazine doesn't go in there, nothing really works. So when you want to fire it, you just turn it, and that reveals the bolt, which in my case is one of the bronze bolts. I gotta say something, I keep on having people say, oh no, don't shoot the bronze bolt, you're gonna wear it out. Well, I mean, they're like 80 bucks a piece, and there's a shit ton of them out there. So all that I did is I went out and I bought five new bronze bolts. So now I can shoot them and enjoy them, and if I wear one out, I can toss in another one. And you should always have spare parts for your guns anyways, especially guns that are from the 40s. Parts are a little tricky to come by, so it's always a good thing to get spare parts. Anyways, here's the sling for it. This sling's pretty cool. This one did not come with the gun, but it says Rover 45. This sling is from 1945. Looks brand spanking new. It was relatively cheap. I don't remember where I got it from. I think IMA or somewhere online. So we'll take that off. Here's the barrel shroud. I do have the gun barrel pointed at me, but I, I'm totally sure that it's clear, so I don't mind. Basically, to take out the barrel, all you have to do is get this shroud, and you turn it. It's got a ratcheting mechanism in it, kind of like an Uzi. So you loosen it up like that. then it, as well as your barrel, will come out. So that's how you remove the barrel. Next thing, the buttstock. There's this button on the back of the buttstock. You just push that. And then you pull down, and your stock comes off. Pretty simple. Next, there's this little cap on the back. You push that down, and you rotate it, and then it'll pop right out. It comes out, as well as your recoil spring assembly. Next thing you do, this charging handle usually is pushed in and this is on safe, so you want to pull it out, just like that, and then you can pull the bolt back. Pull the trigger, you can pull the bolt back the rest of the way, and then once you get it to right there, you can pull the charging handle out. Now, we can take the bolt out the rest of the way. There we go. So here's your bolt. So like I said, this is a bronze bolt. The steel bolts look a little bit different back here and in a couple areas. But essentially they all look for the most part the same. So I'll bring this bolt up close to the camera. It may take a second for it to focus. If it focuses at all. There we go. So there's the face of the bolt. You can see that firing pin right there is just machined into the face. There's no hammer, nothing. It grabs around, chambers the round, and fires it all in one smooth motion, all done by the energy and the recoil spring. And then there's your large extractor on the top. Here's where that charging handle goes in. Here's the underside of it. Pretty simple. Relatively heavy, 
to be honest, but it's a big piece of metal. But it needs all that weight to do all that work with that spring energy. The gun itself is really nothing more than a tube with the trigger mechanism attached to it and a very simple magwell, which this is what you pull to undo the ratcheting on the barrel as well as to rotate it down. And you can barely see. I'll bring it in. It'll take a second to focus again. You can barely see Sten MK2 engraved on there. And the serial number is on the other side. And then here's a selector on here, this side. As well as the selector on this side. Very crude, but effective front sight. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and put the gun back together. That's the basic field strip that I just showed you. So first thing first, obviously the bolt. Place that in there. Kind of have to pull the trigger just to let it fall enough, but not fall too much. And you can put this charging handle in there. Line it up with this hole. Pull the trigger again. It falls forward. There you go. Now I can lock it into safe. And I'm locking it in the safe, not because I'm afraid of it firing, obviously, like this, but just so that it won't move and it'll stay in place. So next you get the recoil spring and assembly. Slide it in there like so. These two notches on either side, one here, one here, line up with two indentations on the tube. You just push it down, line it up, and then rotate. And it's uh, not much, maybe an eighth of a rotation, sixteenth of a rotation, very little clockwise. Now I can get my stock, push it on there, slide it up. Locks in place. Very easy. Last part is the barrel. Take your barrel. You just insert it right in there, like so. Take your barrel shroud. You ratchet it into place. And that's it. The gun is back together and ready to use. So the Sten magazines are kind of a little bit of a pain to load. They came out with a really good loader for it in World War II. And you can still pick them up now and they're not too expensive and they work really well. I do actually own one of them and I was going to bring it because I wanted to show you guys how it works, but I totally forgot it. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to load it with my thumbs, which means I probably will not get a full magazine loaded up. But we will make do. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up loading this magazine, and then we'll get to shooting.
right guys, well I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said in the previous video that I made of this gun, I absolutely love it. Uh, I own a whole bunch of different machine guns, modern ones, old ones, belt fed, sub guns, rifles, and out of all of those, this one is definitely one of my top three to shoot. Um, it's, it's definitely one of the top three. I absolutely love shooting this gun. I plan on making a lot more videos of this gun and just shooting the crap out of it. One thing I like about it too is that parts are relatively cheap to get, unlike some of the other guns, so that you can actually enjoy shooting it here in the U.S. If you wear out a barrel, no big deal. You can get a new barrel. If you wear out anything, no big deal. You can either get a newly made part or a part out of a parts kit, which if any of you own uh, civilian transferable machine guns, you should definitely always, if possible, try to get at least one parts kit for each one. That way you just have a gun that you can scavenge things off of. So it's just a real smooth shooter, no recoil, no cheek weld, but you don't really need it since you don't have any recoil and it was never made to be a long distance gun either. Uh, it's also just real smooth. You know, there's definitely a reason why they made a shit ton of these and it's just a badass gun overall. So I really do like it. So anyways, like I always say, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you here next time.